Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. So I've recently decided to add a few more lessons and reviews and interview videos into the Talking Bass release schedule each week. And today I'm going to start, even though it's a usual Friday video, with a review of probably my favourite set of bass books on the market today. All the good stuff and all the better stuff by one of the greatest bass players on the planet, Yannick Wizdala. So I'm guessing most of you are aware of Yannick Wisdala. He's a modern bass monster that's played with jazz legends like Max Stern, Randy Brecker and loads more. He's also released many albums of his own music and he has a huge online presence with his YouTube channel and website where he hosts his own Video Bass Lessons Academy. For me, he's a huge inspiration and even though he obviously spends most of his time as a regular bass player, his soloing and approach to melodic playing is in my opinion second to none. Just check out any of his YouTube vlog entries to hear some of the most gorgeous phrasing you're going to hear on any instrument, period. So that brings us to these two books. All the good stuff and all the better stuff. All the good stuff was released a few years ago and I originally bought it as a digital copy but I enjoyed it so much I decided to invest in a physical copy. For practice material I always prefer a physical book because I can pull it out and have it on a music stand. Yannick often talks about how the Hannon Virtuoso Pianist book was a really useful resource in his early practice routines and I can relate to that because my brother's a pianist and growing up the Hannon book was always on the stand and I used to play through the exercises on bass alongside him to practice my technique. The Hannon book is basically a huge bunch of melodic exercises designed to work on all the different physical hurdles you'll encounter in your piano studies in both hands. Because they're actual melodic exercises as opposed to mindless technical exercises that guitarists and bass players often fall foul of, the exercises are interesting to play and actually have real musical application. So Yannick has taken that Hannon principle and come up with a super turbocharged version for bass guitar, although as you'll see the exercises can be transferred to other instruments really easily. Now the first book, or the good stuff, is basically a journey through part of Yannick's daily practice routine. There's a brief introduction giving you a tips on how to prepare yourself and organise your surroundings for practice and then we get into the exercises. There's a warm up and then a set of melodic etudes, each working through all 12 keys. They're all listed in bass clef tablature and treble clef so like I mentioned they're easily transferred to other instruments and I've got to say the exercises are really really good and I immediately recognize some of them from Yannick's vlogs. The warm-up is based on this diminished chord voicing you know pretty <laughs> dissonant chord there and it's a little bit of a finger buster but you gradually work that up the neck and I didn't expect it to be such a good workout but it really works on each of the fingers without any unnecessary pain or tension and by the end of it you've got a really really good workout for your hand. Now I won't spoil anything by working through loads of the exercises but just as an example of how useful they can be here's one of the first exercises in the book and this is one that Yannick's shown anyway on a lot of his videos. So this is a descending 2-5 pattern okay a 2-5 chord progression pattern which sounds like this. <laughs> So, as I mentioned, this is a 2-5 pattern, so I'm beginning on a D minor 7 and I'm coming down from the 5th, 3rd, root 7. So I'm just descending through the chord tones and then with nice voice leading, I'm down into the G7, the chord 5, and coming back up through the 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th. So it's just a chord tone outline of both of those chords. And then I just come down a half step and repeat the pattern and they just work down the neck that way. And um, it's not specified how you uh, approach the finger picking, so you could either approach it with alternate picking, which is one type of workout, or I could rake down. You know, either way, it's not specified, so you get two different types of workout for the uh, finger picking. So yes, this is a great workout for the hands, but more importantly, it has specific real musical application. The key is to understand what we're actually doing relative to the chords, which are also written into the part. As I said, I'm descending down through the chord 2 and then back up through the chord 5. So, you know, we're working on the chord tones there. It's a perfect example of how we can melodically play through a 2-5 progression with good voice leading. Even though it's good as a technical etude, working down the neck, we can also use it in a regular 2-5-1 progression. So I could cadence back to the chord 1. So if I'm coming down, you know, and then land back on the chord, uh, on the chord 1. Chord 2, chord 5, chord 1. 
all of the exercises are presented in this way, so it's really important to understand that you're not just playing mindless exercises. You're developing your overall musicianship and opening your mind up to how you can create your own exercise based on any music that you're working on. This way of creating etudes based on any hurdles that you encounter is great inspiration for developing your practice. By working through all the keys in this way and breaking down all the harmonic information, you get a really turbocharged approach to practice. I recently made a practice diary learning solfeggietto by C.P.E. Bach, and as I was working through the music, there were some obvious technical hurdles. At the time, I kept reiterating the point about isolating the problem, and using Yannick's method, I could have taken fragments from that and then just run with them. So, for instance, the opening to the tune, you know, I could take that fragment and then run with it. So then, if I could take it down, Hey presto, I've got a bit of a, a little etude that I can work on. Yannick's second book, All the Better Practice, takes all of those same practice principles and runs with them. Again, we get some great inspirational tips and insight at the start, and then we get a whole set of exercises running through both major and minor tonalities. There are diatonic exercises through scales, chromatic approach exercises, repeated notes, you know, string skipping exercises, loads of great uh, melodic vocabulary that you can apply into your playing. Again, just as an example, here's one of the melodic fragments from All the Better Stuff. So in that exercise we get a nice workout between the third and fourth fingers and we also get some nice voice leading as we move into the A flat diminish there and then back into the chord one. So, that's two of my favourite books for bass guitar, and I definitely recommend them whatever your level. They're a mainstay on my music stand at the moment, and even just from a technical standpoint, I feel so much more refreshed and inspired after working through some of the exercises. Even after a few days of use, I would say that any bass player is going to see some benefits from working through them. You can buy both books on Amazon as both physical and digital copies, and you can also find some extra practice materials over at yannickguizdala.com, so I'll put those links in the info below. Okay, so that's the first of these base book reviews and recommendations. I'll hopefully be adding more of the uh, book reviews in upcoming weeks, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell next to the subscribe for notifications. Also check out TalkingBass.net for hundreds of free bass lessons and sign up to the membership for a ton of extra practice resources. Okay, I'll see you next week.